So the rest of the method that I want to go over is working out this math. Um, so I already done uh, I get a quarter of it. I have these two constant terms. So I can say my intensity total is, so, so the, the intensity pattern, intensity total, is equal to 2i0 plus, and I have to work this term out. Yep. So I guess um, let's do that. <laughs> um, plus dot, dot, dot. Let me leave this as a blank, which we will have to work out. All right, um, so I guess uh, let me set up some things to start talking about it. Um, let's see, what's the good place to go? Mm. Guess. So let me call this calculation of E1, E2. Mm. Um, E1 times E2. E1 times E2. And I want to be careful here because there are some simplifications I will need to make that kind of uh, mirrors what we were discussing earlier qualitatively with the locations of bright fringes and dark fringes. So the first thing I want to do is this is written in terms of just uh, Y and T and I can already tell you that that's going to look complicated. <laughs> so I don't really want to deal with that. Um, let, me, um, let me write out this much. Um, so because I'm going to be making some approximations, I want to make sure each step is clear and at least you know where I'm waving my hand. Um, so when I have um, E1, y t, well, it's going to be some amplitude of oscillation, e naught times, and function of y, that's the complicated piece that I don't really want to deal with. And let me backtrack to this portion. So electric field on the screen, electric field on the screen, it's going to be something that oscillates as a function of time, right? So it's going to be some amplitude times Cosine of um, cosine of omega t, right? But just this, it's way too simple. I mean, where is the uh, where is the position dependence, right? So the way I want to include this position dependence is this way. I want to include it as a phase factor, omega t plus the phase. Of, due to obsolete one, which is a function of y position. Is this expression clear? Does that seem reasonable? Yes? So this way I can describe the electric field on the screen as a function of y position, uh, which uh, would be expressed as this phase factor here. And this also matches with what we were uh, talking about for effect of a single slit, because that phase factor would go away. Uh, yeah, I'll, sorry, I need to move on. So, so let me do it this way for slit number one, and do it the exact same way for slit number two. So it'll be E naught times cosine of same frequency, and then it'll be plus a different phase factor. And it's because those two slits are slightly separated, how much the phase changes will be different. So it's plus V2, Y. Okay. I think this is a good starting place. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, I, I think I can actually take this from here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally calculate this product here. 
and it's going to be simple enough. So it'll be, well, so e, uh, let me do it in purple, different color. So E1 times E2 will be, well, E0 times E0, so E0 squared. So this E0 squared term is what's going to give me that, uh, the I0, right? All right, I have that times, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm skipping a factor of two here for now. So, there, yeah, so E0 squared times, and this is what I have, cosine of omega t plus phi one. I'm just gonna remind myself that phi one is a function of y. It's not a constant, in case that matters later. Times cosine of omega t plus phi two. Once again, function of y. Um, and later on, what I will imagine doing is I'm going to imagine taking an average over this over some time. So the, this is the place. So when I take an average of, of this over some time, this is what you can imagine. You can imagine that I'm integrating this as a function of time t from some zero to some, uh, I guess, period. One period t divided by one over t. That's the time average. Um, so this is constant, I can pull it out. Anybody here know what the time average of this is? I want you to be careful. These two angles are not the same. If you're thinking of time average of cosine of x squared, this is not. We have to do more math. <laughs> so what I need to do, um, uh, as an intermediate step, so I have to expand this out, expand this out, see where that takes us. I haven't done this before class because of the church meeting, and we'll see where that goes. Okay. So let me expand it out. Um, everyone here remembers the angle addition formula by now? Yes? Okay, then I can just write it out. So, um, so let me just do this portion. So this portion here that I'm going to write out is equal to, um, Cosine of omega t, so should I, uh, you know what, I need to write it out for my own purposes. So let me do that. Um, so the angle addition formula, I only need a cosine one. So cosine of alpha plus minus beta is equal to cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. So that's the trig identity that I'm using that hopefully everyone by now remembers. And um, so cosine of omega t times cosine of phi one minus sine of omega t sine of phi two, I'm sorry, not phi two, phi one still. All right, that's my first term times the uh, second term, cosine of omega t, um, times cosine of phi two minus sine of omega t times sine of phi two. Good? Didn't make any mistake? I need to expand this out. There are going to be four terms from each, each one of the uh, multiplications. So this one first. So I will get um, cosine squared omega t cosine squared omega t times um, cosine phi one and cosine phi two. So cosine phi one, cosine phi two. All right, one term down, second term. Second term would be, let me do the same thing except with this one. So cosine omega t times sine omega t. So minus sine omega t, cosine omega t times sine phi two, cosine phi one. Sine phi two, cosine phi one. Everyone following so far? I'm down two terms, uh, two more terms to go. So the second term and the, these two. Um, so it, it will be minus sine omega t, cosine omega t. 
um, sine phi 1, cosine phi 2. <sighs> Let's keep going. Um, oh, that's it. Second term, I mean, the fourth and the last term is minus, so plus, minus times minus, so it's plus. So this term here. Sine omega t, sine omega t, sine omega t squared times sine phi 1 times sine phi 2. All right. Do people see simplifications that I see? That's making me smile a little bit. Because um, I think it's getting a little bit simpler than I thought. I can combine two like, oh uh, wait, can I? No, sorry, I, I uh, misspoke. Sorry, I don't see the simplifications. I have to do the time average. Um, so this is the part that I'm not going to write out, so I want you to follow carefully. Um, so it's a place where I want to use your, your knowledge that you're about to develop about the time average. Uh, time average of this, this, and time average of this over one cycle. So in other words, I want to quickly drive these three formulas. Uh, cosine squared omega t, uh, t dt going from 0 to 1 period would be 2 pi over omega. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, uh, let me make this simple for myself. I'm going to just say some uh, arbitrary unit time t. And this will go from 0 to 2 pi. Um, yeah, and I guess I have to divide by 1 over 2 pi. Yeah, so what this is equal to. And the same thing for, um, same thing for the other two. Um, so going from 0 to 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, sine squared t dt is equal to something. And the very last formula, 0 to 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, sine um, of t times cosine of t dt is equal to, um, equal to something. Uh, I guess depending on how well you did in calculus, you might recognize this. You kind of see this often. Do I, does anyone remember the first one? Should be one half. This is the trig identity you, you use. You use power reducing formula that says this is, um, well, hmm? so this should, uh, power reducing formula should be one plus uh, cosine of two t over two, right? Yeah. So. So go through the calculation, you get one half, because this integrated over one, well, two full periods will give you zero. Okay? S similar thing for this, this should be one minus cosine of two t over two. So you actually get one half here as well. Good, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have other points I wanna make, so I want to go through this quickly. What about the last one? Yeah, you use double angle formula. So when you simplify this, you'll get sine of 2t divided by 2. So what's uh, this integrated over, uh, I guess, two full period? Zero, right? Yeah, so this will give you zero. So we are going to use the fact that these three terms, um, these three types of expressions, uh, simplify to something simple when you average it over the time. Um, so when you do this time average, this is the only thing that's going to remain. This term multiplied by one half. This term will go away entirely because sine omega t, cosine omega t, when you do the integral, it'll go away. Same thing here, sine of, you know, this will go away when you do the time integral. So this is zero. And this term will also remain with the factor of one half. So when you imagine doing all this calculation, which we frankly haven't, but let me just write out the result. The result will be this, that this complicated expression 
simplifies to um, E naught squared. This is after you have done the time average. So not by now, you should have nothing depending on time. You have um, E naught squared divided by 2 times um, divide by 2. I feel like I missed something. Yeah, let's keep going. Cosine of phi 1, cosine of phi 2, um, plus sine of phi 1 times sine of phi 2. Can you simplify this further? You put through this in reverse, right? Yeah. So this simplifies to E naught squared over 2 times, um, I feel like I missed something. Uh, it becomes cosine of phi 1 minus phi 2. So when you put this back in here, I'm off by a factor of two somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, where am I off by a factor of two? Oh, I, I know where. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's see, where, how, I, I know where I'm off by a factor of two. Uh, I just want to introduce it at the correct place. Um, OK, I, I think this is where I can introduce it so that it won't seem like I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> so we've been talking about how this i naught is coming from e naught squared, right? Yes. Um, but we didn't spell out exactly why. But I want you to see that if we have um, this e naught squared, as a square of e naught times the cosine of omega t that we are first going to square and then take this uh, time average thing that we are doing over there. What you will end up here on this side before you make this jump is actually e naught squared over 2. Good? Because you have cosine squared omega t term still. So when you do the time average, you get 1 half. So wherever we see e naught squared over 2, that's what we would associate with i naught in intensity. Okay. So, so now that I have this expression, this is what I can say. We started out with this, right? Started out with e1 times e2, leading to this expression. And when we make the jump here, from here to an expression for intensity, I'm going to say this e naught squared over 2 is um, equivalent to intensity from a single slit. So this would become i naught. i naught times the rest would be this, cosine of phi 1 minus phi 2. OK, so let me write that out. Um, so here we have then, uh, for this uh, total intensity, I got these two already, 2i naught. I have this 2, so let me write that in, plus 2 times. And I have this e1 times e2, which we did here, um, and then took the time average, and resulting in this, i naught times Cosine of, uh, instead of phi 1 minus phi 2, let me, let me write it down this way. Delta phi, phase difference. Right? It's the difference in phase from the uh, electric field coming from those two slits. Yes? And we already have a way to get this phase difference from any other information given in the uh, given in a problem. Like That's what we were working on before, right? If uh, you have this geometry, to figure out this delta x, then the phase difference delta phi. So you know we never really figure out individual phase due to one slit or phase due to the other slit because that's going to get complicated, and we don't need it. All we need is the phase difference, 
which will be 2 pi times path length difference divided by the path, uh, the, the, not well, lambda, divided by the wavelength. So this is the big um, expression for intensity. It, uh, it does take a fair amount of calculation, but the end result you see is actually pretty simple, and you will be able to see that this is actually correct. Uh, we can do a little spot check. Um, at, at the central maximum, at the central maximum, what is delta phi? Zero, Zero right? So this is cosine of zero is one. So I have two I naught plus two I naught, giving me the maximum intensity of four I naught at the central maximum. Yeah? And as you, you know, increase in Y, this oscillation in space you see, um, that looks like a cosine oscillation, right? And I can show you with a small angle approximation that um, this portion does look like a cosine of y. Because with a small angle approximation, this is what you can say. Um, so you know, taking these two expressions here, uh, this is what it would look like. Um, delta phi is equal to 2 pi over lambda times um, d sine theta. And with a small angle approximation, this theta just becomes, a sine theta becomes theta. And um, in fact, the, um, and you can express theta, which is arc tangent of y over l as approximately just y over l under small angle approximation. So this theta would be simply, um, y over L. So that's the approximate expression for phase difference uh, for sort of small physical angle of um, deviation from the central maximum. So, um, so you have this complicated constant, 2 pi d over L, but the, the, the dependence on y is this. And when this delta phi goes in here, it'll look like cosine of 2 pi over lambda d over L times Y. So it does go as cosine of Y. Okay. Yeah, so that's what you see here. As you change in position Y, you see something that varies as cosine, and that's what we get in our derivation. It's, um, I guess in the end, it's, uh, the end result is Simple, you should have, which we should have expected, because when you just plot it out based on our intuition, it's uh, something simple. 